All right, so we're back into the server. I added a new folder called DBC modifications, and this is its content. I will upload the content onto a downloadable source. Don't worry about that. You will have a copy of that as well as soon as you download this. Um, we will need to get the default servers item.dbc file. The way we do that is by going into the server that we're actually using right now, which I use build for for. We will go to where the server boots from, which is build, uh, bin, release with debug information, dbc, and we will need to get item.dbc. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go back into the dbc folder. going to paste it, and as soon as I'm done, I'm going to drag this into the first one, into, um, into this one. As soon as I edit this one, as soon as I uh, drag this file, you see that there is a new CSV file that has been created. The way we open a CSV file is via Excel, or we can use Notepad++, which is actually my preferred method. I'm going to edit with Notepad++. I'm going to scroll all the way down. You're going to see here that these, th this line it says int int int. This is because the item.dbc uh, is being read by the core and the core reads it as an integer, which is a whole number. There is also float and uh, double and uh, unsigned integer, all that type of stuff. Doesn't really matter all that much as soon as long as you keep this line, uh, the first one. Gonna scroll all the way down. And this is our final item. This is what we have. This is the only thing that we can see here, this and this empty line beneath it. What we need to update now is we will need to add the new item into this according to what uh, these numbers stand for. We can get that the first one is the item ID and we can get that the last one is the display ID, but what's all the rest? This is exactly where we have a very, uh, very useful query that we need to run. And we will be able to have everything that we need made for us. This is the query. Going to attach this into the download section. Don't worry about that. And we're going to go ahead and run it. Make sure you select the world database. And don't worry about the drop here. It will not erase your entire server. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this and let's do refresh into this. Now it creates a new table called item that to DBC. So we're going to look for that item to DBC, which is great. That's exactly what we need. We will go to data to view all the stuff and we have here everything that we need. So let's go ahead and search for our, uh, special item, which is ID 60,000. And now we can manually insert it, or we can actually do it a bit quicker and do uh, export. Let's go ahead and do the export part. Let's do Excel CSV. I'm going to copy it to clipboard. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to go back into the uh, this one. I'm going to remove all of this which is uh, basically uh, details of what each of these numbers stand for. Uh, ID, class, subclass, unknown, what, whatever this one is. Material, display ID, inventory type, and sheet. Going to do that. And instead of the quotation marks, we're going to have a comma. And here we don't need a comma and between the new lines, we also don't need a comma. Uh, going to save it and notice how it took me a bit, a bit of time to do that. That is because my export method was the default. We can adjust it and actually use the decimal text. I believe will result in this. Let's give it a go. Let's do okay. 
let's see what is being printed out exactly what we needed copy paste all right so that is the quicker way that we will remember from now on so i'm saving this file now and it's still in a csv format so we're gonna use the second executable we're gonna delete this we don't need it we're gonna use this and drag it into the second format csv to dbc Once this one is done, we will have a brand new item.dbc.csv.dbc. It's a bit confusing, I know, but we're going to get used to it as soon as we do it once. going to delete all the other extensions that we don't need. going to use item.dbc. Now, please keep in mind, we currently have item.dbc that has been created by us at this hour, but we also have the old item dbc which we used we don't get rid of the old item in case things go wrong what we do instead is we're gonna save this file as dot old that is because as soon as we replace this new this new dbc file with the new one it will not get erased but in case things go wrong we will be able to delete this new file and we will be able to restore this .old simply by removing the .old file and we will still have the old one. I'm gonna do no for now. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna paste it regardless. And we have this has been updated by us this date to 50. Yep, makes sense. Right, so now we have the server online as well. And the server now has the item DBC. And it, it knows that the database has the item in it as well, which is great. But the client still doesn't know. We will need to make a new patch. This new patch is very simple to make. We go into the MPQ editor. Uh, I remind you guys, I will have this in the downloadable section. And we will create a brand new. Just going to keep this as default going to create a brand new uh, patch. I'm going to go ahead, click uh, MPQs, new MPQ, and we're going to name it uh, patch, patch M, right? Going to name it patch M, and uh, we're going to create an empty MPQ archive. We will change the game version into wrap of the Lich King one. I'm gonna press OK. I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna keep it default for a thousand files. That's okay by us. <laughs> and we're gonna do finish. Now this new patch has been created right now. It's called patch M, patch dash dash M dot MPQ, and it has absolutely nothing in it. These two files are irrelevant to us. They don't mean anything. We're going to go ahead, right click, add a new folder. We're going to call it. It's very important how we spell it and how we name it because the client knows how to read only from a certain folder. This specific folder is called DB files client. Exactly like that. DB capital D capital B files capital F client capital C. I'm going to do OK. We're going to open this folder. And in it, we're going to apply the new item DBC file. As soon as we're done with that, we can see that this new file, this new patch now has some weight in it, which is great. Now we're going to need to download it. Let's close it and let's apply this new patch in our client. One thing to remember, even if we save the patch where we want to make further changes, that's great. We're, we're able to edit this patch. We're going to go ahead and open this new patch by creating on uh, pressing MPQ, open MPQ, and we're going to need to select this patch F MPQ. We're going to go ahead and do this. And as soon as we move the patch, people with this program will be able to download this brand new uh, item DBC file as well. Uh, one thing you need to remember, this patch is ex exclusive to your server. That means that this uh, this 
might be downloadable by other people, but no other server can interact with it because it doesn't have your database or your core or anything else. That's one thing to keep in mind. But then again, it's exclusive to your server, which means it doesn't work well if the client has other patches of other servers, which are not Blizz like. Think about it this way. Right now, you have your own copy of the game. It's a fresh copy. It's a brand new game. It's a brand new copy, brand new anything. You just apply on top of that a patch that you have created and it works flawlessly. But it will not be the same if you download someone else's patch and you apply your own patch on top of it. It will conflict. It might result in crashes, might result in falling through the roof, falling through the ground, falling through everywhere, and you will not be able to use the files. Hell, it might even cause your client never to be able to, uh, to run because it has a custom uh, interface or whatever. So it's important to make sure that if you send this patch, People who download and are meant to use this patch will need to know that this patch is meant to be uh, exclusive to your server in conjunction with the default files, the default patches. Where we place the patch is actually, let's go ahead and use it right now. Where we place the patch, I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go into my client here. It's within the data folder. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. Within the data folder, the, the client knows to read MPQ patches from. It doesn't matter that the MPQ is lowercase and the MPQ here is uppercase. And yes, you are able to use numbers as well. You can use patch-4.mpq and you can use patch-m smaller case.mpq. It doesn't really matter. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out in game as long as we uh, we know that the server is up and running. But before we do that, I'm going to need to make sure that the server gets a restart because it has a brand new item DBC in it. Sell it. See you in a sec.